Hi friends, my name is Preeti. So today I'm going to discuss about the drugs used to treat mental illness. So it includes antipsychotics, antidepressants, anti-anxiety and anti-manics. So first we'll go into the introduction. So first mental illness, it includes psychosis and neurosis. Okay. Psychosis includes the mental and emotional disturbances whereas neurosis includes mental and physical disturbance okay psychosis means severe illness with serious distortion of thought behavior capacity behavior and capacity to recognize the reality okay and patient is unable to meet the ordinary demands of life so psychosis is a major disorder and neurosis is nothing but it is less serious and uh, capacity to recognize the reality is not lost and it is a minor disorder. Okay. Here the in psychosis, the person experiences the hallucinations. Okay. Uh, nothing but experiencing something which is not present, which is not real. That is nothing but capacity to recognize the reality. But in neurosis, uh, he will not experience the hallucinations. So, psychosis includes the cognitive disorders and functional disorders. Okay. Under cognitive disorders, uh, we have delirium and dementia. Okay. Uh, delirium is nothing but uh, not able to think or speak clearly. And dementia is nothing but a uh, loss of memory, inability to remember the things. Okay. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. And uh, functional disorders. In these functional disorders, there is no disturbance in memory and orientation. Okay, memory and orientation are retained, whereas emotions, thoughts, reasoning, and behavior are altered. They are changed. Okay, and the uh, functional disorders include schizophrenia and paranoid states. Nothing but the person will be doubting everything present around him. And mood or affective disorders. It includes mania and depression. Okay. And if you come to neurosis, it includes anxiety, phobic states, obsessive compulsive disorder, reactive depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, and hysterical, nothing but uncontrolled emotions. Okay. Uh, so uh, out of these, uh, we have to mainly focus on the schizophrenia, mania, depression, and anxiety. Okay. Uh, next, we'll study about these disorders, okay? Schizophrenia is nothing but a split mind. Split mind. Splitting of perception. Nothing but the person. Inability to differentiate between good and bad. Okay? And interpretation from reality. Nothing but hallucinations. The person will be uh, experiencing something which is not real. Okay, an inability to think coherently. Nothing but his thoughts. All that, they will not be clear. Okay. And mania is nothing but elation or irritable mood. Very happy or uh, irritable mood. Okay. And it includes reduced sleep, hyperactivity, uncontrollable thoughts and speech and violent behavior. And depression is nothing but sadness and melancholia, nothing but deep, uh, deep, deep sadness. And loss of interest and pleasure and worthlessness, guilt feeling and a physical and mental slowing and self-destructive ideation. Nothing but suicide attempts like that. And anxiety is a state of unpleasant emotional state. Okay. Uh, it means uneasiness, worry, tension, and concern for the future. Next, we go into the pathophysiology of these mental illness. Okay. Uh, so here, the main neurotransmitters uh, are dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. So why only these neurotransmitters? Because these are excitatory. So if you see the neurotransmitters classification, inhibit, under inhibitory we get GABA and glycine, under excitatory we get dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, acetylcholine. Okay. All these we get. And also 
dopamine serotonin are happy chemicals see we have uh, happy chemicals uh, like uh, dopamine serotonin oxytocin and endorphins okay uh, serotonin is a chemical responsible for mood stabilizing and happiness whereas oxytocin for bonding love and trust okay whereas dopamine is responsible for motivations and feeling of pleasure a pleasure feeling and endorphins uh, it is responsible for pain relief uh, some relaxation feeling like that okay these are happy chemicals whereas uh, norepinephrine is also responsible for ability to concentrate and regulate regulation of of emotions okay so these are the various neurotransmitters and their responsible functions that's why the dopaminergic overactivity in limbic system particularly in this area it leads to schizophrenia and mania and monoaminergic uh, neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and norepinephrine or noradrenaline and serotonin deficit okay decrease in these levels lead to depression okay because these are responsible for happiness and mood stabilizing activities if this is decreased definitely it leads to depression okay so first we'll study about antipsychotics so before going into the classification of drugs just give a look on this uh, what are the parts of the brain and what are the the functions of different areas in the brain okay a uh, particularly a uh, limbic system and basal ganglia because limbic system the uh, decrease in dopamine levels in this uh, area limbic system leads to the schizophrenia so uh, actually uh, its function is it integrates the emotional state and uh, visceral activities okay and basal ganglia is responsible for coordination of posture and extra pyramidal control of smooth muscle tone thalamus conscious pain temperature okay all this you just give a look on these activities and next we come to the uh, psycho, uh, psychosis okay so it includes schizophrenia so according to the dopamine theory of uh, schizophrenia dopamine overactivity in limbic area is responsible for this disorder so what we have to do blockage blockage of dopamine overactivity in limbic area results in antipsychotic effect okay while in basal ganglia it produces parkinson's adverse effect because in parkinson's is nothing but already there is a decrease in dopamine level okay if there is further decrease in dopamine level it leads to the some effects like tremors hallucinations like that some problems okay and next next point is only the positive symptoms appear to be linked with this dopamine overactivity in mesolimbic area but not the negative symptoms okay in uh, this psychosis we have both positive and negative symptoms so this dopamine overactivity we can see only positive but not negative okay what are these positive symptoms positive symptoms mean uh, the symptoms which we develop newly okay nothing but hallucinations delusions and aggression and the negative symptoms means the qualities which are already present in us they get decreased okay nothing but confidence previously we have lot of confidence and after getting uh, uh, this stage what happens there is a loss of confidence and then expressing emotions uh, after the a disorder we, we will we will feel like not expressing any emotions and then thinking with the drawl and apathy lack of interest in doing things okay all this come under negative symptoms so now we'll get into the classification uh, 
uh, classification of antipsychotics. They are also called as major tranquilizers, neuroleptics, and ataractics. Okay, and there are uh, two types: typical antipsychotics and atypical. Typical are nothing but the older drugs, and the atypical are newer drugs. And this typical, they mainly act on D2 receptors. Okay. They mainly block D2, whereas atypical, they block both serotonin and dopamine, D2 and 5-HD2, okay. And uh, by using these drugs, we get some extra pyramidal side effects, okay. Nothing but drug-induced movement disorders. They are Parkinson's, ecthesia, dystonia, and dyskinesia. Okay. Uh, ecthesia is nothing but restlessness in patients treated with this typical drugs. Uh, and also inability to sit still. And dystonia is nothing but disturbance in tone of muscle, nothing but muscle rigidity. And dyskinesia is a condition in which there is a muscle incoordination. Okay. These side effects are more when taken uh, typical antipsychotics and they are less when taken uh, atypical antipsychotics. Okay. Now, uh, we'll come into the typical, nothing but older and also first generation and also they block mainly D2 receptors and they are of two types, phenothiazines. They are classified as phenothiazines because they contain this ring, okay, phenothiazines. Under this, we have low potency, medium potency and high potency. Under low potency, there are three drugs, chlorpromazine, thioridazine and mesoridazine and medium trifluperazine and perfenazine and a high flufenazine. This is based on its uh, mechanism of action. And then uh, based on the structure uh, under alkyl side chain, we get uh, chlorpromazine and trifluperazine, okay, alkyl side chain. Because here you can see chlorpromazine is a propyl dimethylamine and trifluperazine Pyrazine is a propyl pyperazine. Okay, these two have alkyl side chains. So they come under alkyl side chain. And under piperidine, we get thioridazine and mesoridazine. Okay, these two drugs contain piperidine ring in their structure. And then piperazines. Okay. There we get trifluperazine and perfenazine. And also flufenazine. Okay, these are the drugs containing piperazines. Okay. So see here it is a chlorpromazine and trifluopromazine, not the perazine. Okay. Previously I have said this drug, not this drug. It is chlorpromazine and trifluopromazine. Okay, it ends with a pro. If the drug name ends with the promazine, then they are alkyl side chain containing drugs. If the drug ends with a parazine, then they are the drugs containing piperazine in their structures. And if it contains redazine, means D-A-Z-I-N-E, they contain piperidine. Piperidine. See, it is spelling like D-D. So like that you remember. Okay. Promazines, alkyl side chains, parazines, piperazines, and D. If there is a D pronunciation, then they contain piperidine ring. And next we come to the drugs uh, like fluorobutyrophenols, like haloperidol and trifluperidol. Okay. And then thioxanthines. See, this is a xanthine ring. Thioxanthine. X-A-N T H E N E xanthine is different. X-A-N T H I N E xanthine is different. Okay. These two are different. Under thioxanthines, we get thiothixine and chlorpothixine. Thiothixine is a propyl piperazine, whereas chlorpro is a propyl dihalkyl. And dihydroindol, which is nothing but molindone. And another class, dibenzoxapine plus and piperazine, which is a loxapine. Means this loxapine drug consists of these two rings in its structure. And then diphenyl butyl piperidine. It includes penfluoridol and pemocide. Okay, just remember the drug and also the structures present in that is very much important. 
and now here chlorpromazine it also acts as a local anesthetic okay just remember that they may ask antipsychotic drug which is used as local anesthetic chlorpromazine and in anti parkinsons also we have anti diuretic drug used as anti parkinsons okay and here uh, we have thioridazine the adverse effects are it can be produces cardiac toxicity and also sudden death okay and here the haloperidol or oh, this preferred in cardiovascular disease patients okay and next we come to atypical or second generation or newer antipsychotics they block both 5ht2 and d2 receptors here we have close up line which includes dibenzodiazepine ring and also piperazine ring and also pyrrolidine ring okay these many rings are present and if it is taken in higher doses it causes a risk of seizures and olanzapine it consists of benzodiazepine plus thiophene and risperidone it is one of the natural antipsychotic okay natural antipsychotic is risperidone which is obtained from ravulfi alkaloid okay and then ziprazidone quetiapin aripiprazole amis amisulpiride and zoltepin okay here clozapine is a dibenzodiazepine whereas reserpidone and this sulpiride these two comes under di substituted benzamides okay amides they are d pronunciation amides okay these are di substituted benzamides see some of these drugs they also block uh, adrenergic receptors and also histamine receptors okay but they mainly block this 5hst2 and the serotonin and dopamine okay so this is the difference between typical antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics these are older and first generation and they block d2 and they show more uh, extra pyrimidine side effects and they decrease as the positive symptoms of schizophrenia and they have less therapeutic efficacy whereas here these are newer and second generation they block d2 and 5ht2 whereas weak d2 blocking effect and more potent 5ht2 blocking effect they have and they show less extra pyrimidine side effects and they decrease both positive and negative symptoms and they have more therapeutic efficacy okay and next we come to the important uh, adverse effects of all the antipsychotic drugs okay some of the drugs show hypersensitivity reactions okay they are cholestatic jaundice which is shown by low potent phenothiazines nothing but we have chlorpromazine thioridazine and mesoridazine and some drugs show skin rashes urticaria and contact dermatitis nothing but they are shown with chlorpromazine and agranulocytosis and myocarditis is shown by clozapine okay and dose related uh, disorder with clozapine is seizures whenever a high dose of clozapine is taken then it may lead to seizures see i have given only some important effects of the drugs still there are so many effects but i gave only the important one okay so next we'll go into the antidepressants so here antidepressants oh uh, it is due to the uh, deficiency of uh, norepinephrine and serotonin neurotransmitters so what we have to do we have to increase their levels at the receptor site so first to increase their levels what we have to do we should inhibit their reuptake the first point monoamine reuptake inhibitors now see they are reuptaken by presynaptic nerve terminals so first we have to inhibit that and the second one we have to inhibit the metabolism of that metabolism of these neurotransmitters they are metabolized by monoamine oxidase enzymes so we have to inhibit those enzymes so that 
or we can increase their levels at the receptor site. First, we'll study about the monoamine reuptake inhibitors. They are classified into tricyclic antidepressants, which include norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake inhibitors and predominantly norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Okay. Under this, we have imipramine, trinipramine, clomipramine, amitriptyline, doxapine, and dorthopine. And the predominantly means these drugs block mainly norepinephrine reup norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Okay. Over here we get desipramine, nortriptyline, amoxapine, and levoxetin. Here you see pramine, the drugs ending with pramine. They are belong they belong to the category dibenzoazepines. Dibenzoazepines, pramines. And here, triptyline, these drugs belong to the category dibenzocycloheptanes. Okay. Just remember the structure with the ring present in them. Instead of the whole structure, just you can remember the name, which ring uh, it is present in them. Okay. And next, we come to selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Selective. Okay. They inhibit only serotonin. The drugs are triflophenyl oxyderivatives. Under this category, we have fluoxetine and paroxetine and dapoxetine. Whereas under tetrahydronaphthalamines, we have cetralin. And the other drugs are fluoxamine, citalopram, and escitalopram. Under naphthalamine, we have only cetralin. Okay? And under selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, we have venlafaxine and chuloxetine. chuloxetine. Next, we come to monoamino oxidase inhibitors, the enzyme inhibitors. Here we have no selective, means they can act both on, they can inhibit both enzymes A and B. Okay, and they are irreversible, okay, non selective, irreversible. They are non hydrazine derivatives, tran, tranyl cypromine, okay, and then phenylzine and isocarboxazide. And then MAOA inhibitors, which are reversible, moclobamide and clorzilin. They preferentially deaminates of norepinephrine. And normally, this MAOA function is it deaminates, it metabolize, metabolize both serotonin and norepinephrine. Okay. And we have to inhibit that enzyme to increase the levels of these neurotransmitters at the receptor site. For that, we use moclobamide. Moclobamide and clorzilin. And under MAOB, we have salazilin and tazalazilin. And the main function of this MAOB is it preferentially deaminates phenylethylamine. Okay? It preferentially metabolizes phenylethylamine. And these two enzymes, they degrade dopamine. Okay, the common function is dopamine is degraded by both the enzymes, MAOA and MAOB. And the most important adverse effect with the non-selective antidepressants are non-selective MAO inhibitors are cheese reaction. Okay. A cheese reaction is nothing but so whenever we consume certain varieties of cheese or wines or pickles or yeast extract. So whenever we consume those items, they normally contain more amounts of tyramine and dopa. Okay, these tyramine and dopa, they are useful for the synthesis of norepinephrine and serotonin. Okay, serotonin is synthesized from tyramine, whereas uh, uh, norepinephrine is synthesized from dopa. Okay, if the person taking MAO inhibitors, okay, if we consume uh, those items, those uh, tyramine and dopa containing foods, if we consume, then what happens? The levels of these norepinephrine and serotonin, they increase in the body because the metabolizing enzyme is blocked. It can, now it cannot metabolize those. So what happens? The levels of this neurotransmitter increases and it results in hypertensive crisis and cerebrovascular accidents. 
so it is very dangerous condition so in that condition we give again alpha blockers so that these alpha blockers like fentolamine and prazosin they prevent the binding of these uh, epinephrine nor epinephrine at the receptor site cheese reaction remember this and then we have atypical antidepressant nothing but the newer drugs and the second generation drugs here we have trazodone which is a first antidepressant drug first atypical antidepressant it less efficiently block serotonin uptake less efficiently and also it is a weak 5 ht2 antagonist okay and also it is a prominent alpha antagonist trazodone is mainly preferentially it is a alpha antagonist whereas it is weak 5 ht blocker and antagonist and under mian serine it blocks alpha 2 and it shows antagonistic action at ih2 and also histamine receptors and metazapine it blocks alpha 2 auto receptors on norepinephrine and alpha 2 hetero receptors on serotonin neuron so that what happens there is an increase in norepinephrine and serotonin so here auto receptors are nothing but the self its own receptors See, alpha two is an adrenergic receptor. Okay, uh, the alpha two receptors are present on uh, nor uh, adrenergic neuron. If they are present on adrenergic neuron, they are called as self receptors, auto receptors. If adrenergic receptor is present on serotonergic neuron, on another neuron, then it is called as a hetero receptor. Okay, that's it. And then. Bupropion, which is a very important drug, it inhibits dopamine and norepinephrine uptake. Okay, and after consuming the drug, the metabolite is amphetamine, which results in smoking cessation. Okay, the most important point. And then, tyaneptin and and aminoptin, these two enhances the 5-HT uptake. And then enhance the 5-HT2, 5-HT uptake blocker. Okay, 5-HT the serotonin uptake blockers. And then atomoxetin, the it is a selective norepinephrine reuptake blocker. But it is not a tricyclic antidepressant. So previously we have seen uh, preferentially norepinephrine a reuptake inhibitor. Okay. So here, atomoxetin is also a preferentially norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, but it is not a tricyclic antidepressant. Okay. And the above two drugs they mainly uh, inhibit this serotonin uptake. Okay, out of these many atypical drugs, bupropion and atomoxetin are very important. and next we go to the anti anxiety so we have completed anti psychotics and anti depressants next anti anxiety so anxiety is nothing but some degree of anxiety is present in every person okay it is shown by every individual some degree of anxiety is a part of the normal life but treatment is needed when it is disappropriate to the situation and excessive so when it is Disproportionate. I think that when it is uh, excessive, then we should take the treatment. So some psychotics and depressed patients may also exhibit this anxiety. Okay. And the next year we'll see the drugs. Anti-anxiety are also called as anxiolytics and also minor tranquilizers. Major tranquilizers are anti-psychotics. Okay. So here we use benzodiazepines. Okay. Uh, because uh, as there is here, there is excitation. Now we have to cause, we have to decrease the excitation. So we use benzodiazepines which act on GABA receptor and causes hyperpolarization, and there will be decreased excitation. 
Under this, we have diazepam, chlorodiazepoxide, oxazepam, lorazepam, and alprazolam. Here, chlorodiazepoxide is the first clinically used drug, anti anxiety drug. And alprazolam is a high potent drug out of all these benzodiazepines. And under azapirones, which are non sedative, we have bispirone, zepirone, and azapirone. And mechanism of action of these drugs is, is not clearly known. And under sedative antihistamines, we have hydroxyzine, okay, which is a mainly H1 antihistamine, and it has many properties like it is sedative, it is antihistaminic, it is anti anxiety, anti emetic, anti muscarinic, and spasmolytic. Okay, this drug has these many properties. And under antidepressants, we have it is mainly useful in chronic anti anxiety and panic attacks, okay such as selective serotonin reuptaking, reuptake inhibitors, fluoxetine. And next, we have beta blockers. It is useful in performance anxiety. Okay, nothing but propranolol. So next, we'll study about antimanics. Okay, antimania. Here we have all uh, the drugs which are used to treat antimania or mo and mood stabilizing drugs. Okay. Here we have lithium carbonate, and if a lithium carbonate is toxic to that particular patient, okay, then we use the alternative drugs like sodium valproate, or uh, atypical antipsychotics, carbamazepine, and lamotrigine. Lamotrigine, okay. So the mechanism of uh, lithium carbonate is also not known, but it mainly inhibits. Uh, this uh, phosphatidol ionositol phosphate cyclic pathway. Okay. Uh, it mainly inhibits that pathway and uh, so that there is no release of the neurotransmitter. Okay. Uh, so the main effects of this lithium are uh, it inhibits the action of antidiuretic hormone on digital tubules in the kidney and it causes diabetes in spirits and it leads to the more urination okay and also the next action is uh, it has a insulin like action on glucose metabolism and also in lithium therapy there is an increase in levels of leukocytes okay leukocytes and the next one is it inhibits the release of thyroid hormones in lithium therapy, these many actions can be seen. There is increased urination, there is a decrease in the thyroid hormones, and also uh, there is an increase in leukocyte number. And also there is an insulin-like action on glucose metabolism. Okay, these many effects are seen with lithium carbamate. So that's it. Uh, by this, we have completed uh, antipsychotics, antidepressants, anti anxiety, and anti manics. Okay, I have discussed very briefly, and wherever a mechanism of action is required, there only I have explained, and also only important adverse effects I have explained. So this is the final conclusion of all the drugs. So these are the class of the uh, drugs and the synonyms. Okay, the antidepressants, which are also called as thymoleptics, and antipsychotics, also called as neuroleptics, major tranquilizers, and ataraptics. So these are the synonyms. Sometimes we get confused of this. Okay, just give it a look. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching my video. We will meet in our next video.